Welcome to this edition of Exeter's YouTube blogs and in this edition we're going to talk about proof test coverage and how proof test coverage can affect the SIL rating of our SIF, our safety instrumented function. And in particular we're going to look at low demand SIFs in a process application. So in order to work out the SIL for the SIF one of the first things we need to do is to figure out the PFD average. So how do we do that? Well, the PFD average for the SIF is made up of the individual PFD average for each of the pieces of equipment. So what we talk about is the PFD average for the sensors. So this would include the sensors themselves, any conditioning circuitry, any interfacing such as a Zena barrier or an interposing relay. Plus then we would need to include the PFD average of the logic solver. And here again with the logic solver we would have to include things like the power supply as well as all the modules etc. And then we would have to add in the PFD average of our final elements, FE. And here again this would include for example actuators, solenoids, the valves, if there are motor controllers those would be included as well. So for the SIF it's from the beginning to the end and everything in between. So one of the ways that we can look at this initially is to take a simplified equation. And the simplified equation is very simply our failure rate and in this case what we're interested in is our dangerous failure rate because a, a failure on demand typically could lead to a dangerous failure. So we're interested in those dangerous failure rates. Then we have to consider our proof test interval. How frequently are we testing? And we have to do that for each of these particular subsystems. So we would have lambda d test intervals ti divided by 2 for the sensors and we do the same for the logic solver and we do the same for the final elements. And right now we're just for simplicity we're just looking at a single element system, no redundancy. The thing about this then is we're assuming that we have a hundred percent fault coverage here, which means we can find all of our dangerous faults for each of these particular elements. Now here again in reality that's not possible. Certainly not for the final elements. Some of the logic solver manufacturers will say they can almost get a hundred percent, some say a hundred percent, but certainly when it comes to the final elements you're not going to get anywhere near a hundred percent. So what does that do to our simplified formula? Well, now we have to look at the effectiveness of our proof test coverage. So we call this CPT, coverage for proof test. And in this case it's how many of those dangerous faults can we find? Now here again one of the distinctions between a proof test and a normal test. A normal test is to prove that the whole SIF works. A proof test is designed specifically to try and find those dangerous faults that the automatic diagnostics can't find. So that's the purpose of the proof test. So we say CPT is our ability to find those dangerous faults. So let's assume that our CPT equals 80%. So we can find 
But then it means that 1 minus CPT is 20%. So this now means that every time we do a proof test, we're not going to be able to find 20% of our faults. Now, why is this important? It's important because we have to consider what's known as mission time. Mission time is defined as the time for the SIF to operate uh, before we have to do major overhauls or replacements. It's different from useful life because the useful life for each individual piece of equipment in the SIF will be different. Sometimes, and we've been dealing with customers where they've specified a 15 year mission time when they have to refurbish their valves after 10 years. So let's say if we use that mission time of 10 years. So now we have to add in something called mission time. And let's say it's, for argument's sake, we'll say 200,000 hours. That's our mission time. And if we say our proof test interval our PTI is now, let's say, 10,000 hours. What does that do to our simplified equation? Well, now it means that every time we do a proof test, we have to now consider the impact of imperfect proof testing. So now we have to modify our formula to say that it's now CPT times lambda D times PTI, our proof test interval, divided by 2. But now we have to add in our 1 minus CPT multiplied by lambda d times now mission time divided by 2. Because every time we do a proof test we know we're only going to be able to find 80% of potentially dangerous faults. So 20% is not going to be found every time we do a proof test. So this is going to accumulate over time. So what does this mean to our PFD average? Well, what's going to happen is not drawn that very straight that if we run to the point where we do our proof test so this is our PTI again and we do our proof test and we find 80%. So this is the 20% we can't find. And if we find any problems, we repair the problems and we carry on. So we run again to the next proof test interval. And here again, now we're 20% of our 20%. So you can see, as we keep going, what's happening to our PFD average. Well, over time, our PFD average is going to get worse and will eventually take us from one sill level to the next. So mission time then becomes very important, especially if we have low or relatively low coverage. That's why we have to now modify our formula to be our PFD average of CPT lambda D PTI over 2 plus 
1 minus CPT lambda D MT over 2. So if we assume then 80%, 20%, and let's say our lambda D is 100 fits. So if lambda D is 100 fits, per hour, which is basically uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 per hour, and we plug that in, what we end up with is our PFD average is now equal to 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 7 times 10 to the 4 for 10,000 hours divided by 2 plus 0 0.2 times 10 to the minus 7 times 200 times 10 to the 5 uh, sorry 10 to the 3 divided by 2. So if we work that out, what have we got? So this is 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3 plus, this is going to be 0 0.2 times, what's that, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 10 to the minus 2 divided, oh, that's already divided, so that's going to be what? That's point zero, 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 0.0004 plus point zero, zero, 0.002 which gives us 0 0.0024, which is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, if we work that out as a risk reduction factor, we know that 0.0024, if we take 1 over that, roughly that's going to be uh, a sil 2. And that's with 80%. If we used 100%, what would happen then? Well, if it was 100%, so if we assume CPT is 100%, then our PFD average, using our simplified equation, would just be our 100 fits, which is 10 to the minus 7, times our 10,000, which is 10 to the 4, divided by 2, which would come out to be 1 over 2 times 10 to the minus 3, which is equal to 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So you can see the difference in that. So if we then invert that, so 1 over 0.5, it's going to be what? 2, 20 times. So this would give us. 2 times 10 to the 3, or 2,000, as a risk reduction factor. So that's our PFD, and this is our risk reduction factor. And we know that the relationship between PFD and risk reduction factor is inverse. So that would say that has to be a SIL 3. With 100%, we could achieve a SIL 3. But over here, 
if we work this out, so the PFD average is that, and therefore our risk reduction factor will be the inverse, which is 1 over 2.4 10 to 3, which is very approximately, that would be about 400, which is a SIL 2. So you can see we move from a SIL 3 down to a mid-range SIL 2 simply by not having 100% proof test coverage. So that's why it's very important to understand that relationship. So clearly when we're designing we want to try and create a proof test to find as many of those dangerous faults. Now if you're using a tool such as Excellencia Excellencia will look at the devices you've selected and recommend a proof test coverage based upon the manufacturer's recommendations for proof testing and proof test coverage. Of course you, you can accept it or not, but it's usually pretty good and the proof test coverage factor will be taken into consideration in the calculation in Excellencia. Of course, let us not forget these are simplified equations just to illustrate the point. There are many variables that you need to consider when looking at calculating the SIL for a SIF. And the PFD average is just one part of it. We obviously have to meet the hardware fault tolerant requirements and we have to meet the systematic capability aspects. Those have to be considered. Now, of course, if you have a tool like Excellencia, Excellencia has certain features built into it, such as being able to suggest a proof test coverage based upon the equipment you've selected and what the manufacturer is recommending as a proof test coverage for the device. Also, Excellencia can take into consideration applications such as dirty service, clean service, tight shutoff. There are lots of other variables that Excellencia considers as well that is not part of this simplified approach. But as you can see, just in looking at this simplified approach, the difference between assuming a perfect proof test and having a realistic proof test coverage in this case is almost five times different and takes us from being able to achieve a SIL 3 to being able to achieve a mid-level SIL 2. So proof test coverage is very important and it's something that you need to be aware of and consider. Even now, some end users that we've come across are still using 100% proof test coverage. All that's doing is fooling you into thinking you have a higher integrity level than you actually really have. So if this blog has been interesting, please let us know. We always appreciate your feedback. Thanks for listening.